let's get all the crazy out of the way. Uh, so a bunch of people asked me, since we talked about the simulation last time, uh, we talked about hacking the simulation. Do you have any updates, any insights about how we might be able to go about hacking simulation if we indeed do live in a simulation? I think a lot of people misinterpreted the point of that South by talk. Um, the point of the South by talk was not literally to hack the simulation. Uh, I think that this we this is this is an idea is literally just I think theoretical physics. I think that's the whole, you know, the whole goal, right? You want your grand unified theory, but then okay, build a grand unified theory, search for exploits, right? I think we're nowhere near actually there yet. My hope with that was just more to like, like, are you people kidding me with the things you spend time thinking about? Do you understand like kind of how small you are? You are, you are bytes and God's computer, really? And the things that people get worked up about and, you know. So basically it, it was more a message of uh, we should humble ourselves that we, we get to uh, like, what, well, what are we humans in this byte code? Yeah. Maybe. And not just, not just humble ourselves, but like, like, I'm not trying to like make people feel guilty or anything like that. I'm trying to say like, literally, look at what you are spending time on, right? What are you referring to? You're referring to the Kardashians? What are we talking about? Um, I'm referring to, no, the Kardashians, see, everyone knows that's kind of fun. I'm, I'm referring more to like the Wars. economy. You know, this idea that we got to up our stock price, <laughs> like, or, or what is, what is the goal function of humanity? You don't like the game of capitalism? Like you don't like the games we've constructed for ourselves as humans? I'm a big fan of, of, of capitalism. I don't think that's really the game we're playing right now. I think we're playing a, a different game where the rules are rigged. Um, <laughs> Okay, which games are interesting to you that we humans have constructed and which aren't? Which are productive and which are not? Actually, maybe that's the real point of the of the talk. It's like, stop playing these fake human games. There's a real game here. We can play the real game. The real game is, you know, nature wrote the rules. This is a real game. There still is a game to play. But if you look at, sorry to interrupt, but if, I don't know if you've seen the Instagram account, Nature is Metal. The game that nature seems to be playing is a lot, a lot more cruel than we humans want to put up with, or at least we see it as cruel. It's like the bigger thing eats the smaller thing and uh, does it to impress another big thing so it can mate with that thing. And that's it. That, <laughs> that seems to be the entirety of it. Well, there's no art, there's no music, there's no comma AI. There's no comma one, no comma two, no George Hotz with his brilliant talks at South by Southwest. See, I disagree though. I disagree that this is what nature is. I think nature just provided basically a uh, open world MMORPG. And, um, you know, here it's open world. I mean, if that's the game you want to play, you can play that game. But that, isn't, that, isn't that beautiful? I don't know if you played Diablo. They used to have, uh, I think, cow level where it's... <laughs> Uh, so everybody will go just they figured out this like the best way to gain like experience points is to just slaughter cows over and over and over <laughs> and uh so they figured out this little sub game within the bigger game that this is the most efficient way to get experience points and everybody somehow agreed that getting experience points in rpg context where you always want to be getting more stuff more skills more levels keep advancing that seems to be good so might as well spend, sacrifice actual enjoyment of playing a game, exploring a world, mm -hmm. and spending like hundreds of hours of your time in cow level. I mean, the number of hours I spent in cow level, I'm not like the most impressive person because people have spent probably thousands of hours there, but it's ridiculous. So that's a little absurd game that brought me joy in some weird dopamine drug kind of way. Yeah. So you you don't like those games. You don't you don't think that's us humans failing the the yeah nature. I think so. And that was the point of the talk. Yeah. So how think, do we hack it then? Well, I, I want to live forever and <laughs> wait. <what? laughs> well, I want to live forever 
And this that's is a, the goal. Well, that's a game against nature. Yeah. Immortality is the good objective function to you. I mean, start there and then you can do whatever else you want because you got a long time. What if immortality makes the game just totally not fun? I mean, like, why do you assume immortality is uh, somehow uh, It's not a good objective function? It's not immortality that I want. A true immortality where I could not die, uh, I would prefer what we have right now. Um, but I want to choose my own death, of course. I don't want nature to decide when I die. I'm going to win. I'm going to be you. <laughs> And then at some point, if you choose, commit suicide, like, how long do you think you'd live? Until I get bored. See, I don't think people, like, in, like brilliant people like you that really ponder living a long time are really considering how, how meaningless life becomes. Well, I want to know everything, and then I'm ready to die. As long as yeah, but why do you want, isn't it possible that you want to know everything because it's finite? Like the reason you want to know, quote unquote, everything is because you don't have enough time to know everything. And once you have unlimited time, then you realize like, why do anything? Like why learn anything? I want to know everything and then I'm ready to die. So you have, yeah. Okay, well, it's, it's not, a, it's not a, like it, it's a terminal value. It's not. It's not in service of anything else. I'm conscious of the possibility. This is not a certainty, but the possibility is of that engine of curiosity that you're speaking to is actually uh, a, a symptom of uh, the finiteness of life. Like without that finiteness, your curiosity would vanish like, like, a, like a morning fog. All right, cool. Then, Bukowski uh, talked about love like that. Then um, let me solve immortality. Let me change the thing in my brain that reminds me of the fact that I'm immortal, tells me that life is finite shit. Maybe I'll have it tell me that life ends next week, right? I'm okay with some self-manipulation like that. I'm okay with, with deceiving oh, myself. Change, oh, Rika, <laughs> change, sure. changing the code. Yeah, well, if that's the problem, right? If the problem is that I will no longer have that that curiosity, I'd like to have backup copies of myself uh, which Revert, I yeah well, which I check in with occasionally to make sure they're okay with the trajectory and they can kind of override it. Maybe a nice like I think of like those wave nets, those like logarithmic go back to the copies. Yeah, but sometimes it's not reversible. Like uh, sure, I've yeah. done this with video games. When once you figure out the cheat code or like you look up how to cheat old school like single player, it ruins the game for you. Absolutely, I know that feeling. But again. That just means our brain manipulation technology is not good enough yet. Remove that cheat code from your brain. Here you but go. what if we? So it's also possible that if we figure out immortality, that all of us will kill ourselves before we advance far enough to uh, to be able to revert the change. Well, I'm not killing myself till I know everything. So <laughs> that's what you say now because your life is finite. <laughs> you know, I think yes, yeah, self modifying systems gets comes up with all these hairy complexities and yeah. can i promise that i'll do it perfectly no but i think i can put good safety structures in place 